Hello everyone, a quick video today for another PlayStation 2 which uh, I bought um, yesterday from a flea market. It wasn't um, planned, I would just this is my um, uh, my PS2 here and this is the one I got. It wasn't uh, planned, um, I just found it out in the street for five bucks and the guy um, told me that uh, does not work you can have it for spare parts only and then I checked the laser um, and several things you can tell at a glance and it looked um, okay so I d had decided to to buy it and give it a try uh, and see what is going wrong with this um, and maybe we can fix it here together um, during this video um, so let's uh, uh, get uh, get it tested and see um, how it looks. So first step, power it up, and it is okay. I'm glad. Second test will be a DVD a game, a PlayStation 2 game, which cannot be read, and this is not good but I guess the guy was right the system doesn't work well okay step number three uh, which helps us to identify the uh, fault is to insert an audio CD and you can see in this case it works fine so this gives me the idea that um, it's uh, just the part uh, of the laser that cannot read DVDs and PlayStation games but it's not completely damaged because the circuit that um, can identify and play CD uh, audio CDs instead uh, looks uh, fine. The next step will be uh, to test another CD uh, from a PlayStation One uh, and load try to load again. This is why I'm keeping this uh, demo one CD that came with my um, PlayStation 1 um, and I use it for testing purposes. Generally speaking it is a good practice to uh, keep um, uh, PS1 uh, uh, game or disc or this demo disc or whatever have you uh, for uh, testing purposes because uh, if it, uh, the PlayStation 2 can load uh, this disc like this moment, this very moment uh, you can immediately understand that the problem lies with the DVD um, lens um, ability to read the DVD discs only, so it's not completely damaged. And uh, yet another test we can conduct uh, is to uh, put a CD again um, with a copy um, of a game for PS1 and see if the machine has a chip inside and apparently it seems like it does so we have a chip uh, modified um, PlayStation 2 that's good and now the time has come for a little operation um, we need to remove the uh, laser uh, the laser head uh, those two uh, bronze brackets need to go to release the ship the shaft that uh, holds the head together and then we can uh, flip it over now you don't have to uh, remove the whole head from the machine I just did it because uh, we can have a better look uh, to the potentiometers, a couple of potentiometers or variable resistors, however you want to call it um, underneath because uh, we need to adjust those to get um, the reading from uh, CD and DVD. The one uh, up at the top uh, is the one uh, for the DVD and uh, we must turn it just a couple uh, of degrees clockwise and the one uh, below is the one for the CD. Now here is a better uh, view, even a better view. Um, I'm not going to turn clockwise the 
for this uh, potentiometer for the CD because we have already seen that it's uh, okay. I'm just going to move by three, two, three degrees the one for the DVD instead. And so we reached the point of truth, the moment of truth. Um, we can see that um, since uh, we have inserted a classic um, original uh, PlayStation 2 DVD game um, inside, uh, we can see it can start nicely and it goes smoothly overloading the game and it feels great because it was uh, a good deal to get this as faulty for five bucks and um, with just a little adjustment underneath the laser uh, we can now um, consider this as a fully working device and it feels great um, whenever um, happens for you to come uh, across uh, faulty machines now you know how to follow these three four steps to spot the problem and um, if um, this is the case you can only adjust uh, the power um, potentiometers and you're good to go so thanks for watching um, consider subscribing um, I'll be following up with um, other videos shortly um, with another repair review or whatever thank you very much bye